We're really excited to have you here. I am Amy Theory, the Director of Supports for Formative Assessment here at Smarter Balance, and we are so excited that so many of our state network of educators, our state leads, and even some of our Smarter staff have decided to join us today. So welcome and thank you so much for um, dedicating part of your time with us today. We are recording the webinar, so those who were not able to join based on, you know, difficulty or difficult different time zones, we wanted to make sure that we could record. So if you could please go ahead and keep your audio on mute so we're not um, picking up footprints or footsteps, et cetera, in the background. Um, the audio for the computer is in the upper right-hand corner next to your name. Or on your phone, you just simply um, hit mute. We will be using the chat box today for questions and also we're hoping that if you have an answer to a question or that you'd like to share, you could share in the chat box. Um, make sure that in your two, you um, adjust it to everyone. Otherwise, you just send your messages um, privately to Shauna, um, to the host of the event. So go ahead and change that to everyone. And then when you type in your question, if you could put your identifying state for example, if you're from Vermont, just abbreviate Vermont, California. That way that we can know who um, can help direct your questions to if they're not answered during the webinar. I want to um, let you know that this webinar was created by a wonderful team of state leadership um, team members from Vermont, South Dakota, Hawaii, California, Montana, and Washington. We do have a couple of co-presenters today. So I will let them introduce themselves now. Hi, everyone. My name is Joe Moran. I'm with the South Dakota Department of Education. Uh, my title is an assessment specialist here, and my main focus is to assist districts with the usage of the interim assessments, as well as the digital library, and all of the formative assessment strategies that we are aiming to provide our districts with. And Becky is um, in California, and she's an education program consultant. Hello, this is Anton Jackson. I'm a Director of Assessment Development here in Washington. And I'm Shelley O'Dell. I'm also here in Washington and I focus on ELA assessment. Thank you, Joe. Shelley, Anton, and Becky, thank you for joining us. So our goals and success criteria for the webinar today um, are that we want to provide you with tips. So we're hoping that as a a learner on this webinar today that you will gain tips and ideas to intentionally use interim assessment blocks to gather and act on information about student learning. So we will know we've been successful when you are able to use an interim assessment block in one or more ways to gather and act on information about student learning. After using the interim assessment block, you will reflect on the process of using the interims and you will implement next steps to move student learning forward. Smarter Balance is a system of assessments. Of course, we have our summative assessments, we have interim assessments, and then we also have the digital library. We are very committed to high quality teaching and learning for all students, and so we have interim assessments, and we actually have two kinds of interim assessments. And so today's webinar is really going to focus on how to use the interim assessment blocks. These are smaller sets of assessments of related concepts, and they can provide more detailed information for instructional purposes. We also have the interim comprehensive assessments, and these assessments are more similar to the summative. They have the same content and report scores on the same scale system. So one's a little bit larger like the summative, and then the other ones are little bite-sized pieces, little chunks that we can use to inform instruction in our classrooms. So if you hear someone referring to the ICA, that's the interim comprehensive assessment or the IABs. Those are your interim assessment blocks. And then, of course, the digital library, which many of you create resources for, are part of that complete system. The digital library resources um, embed the formative assessment process, but we can also use the formative assessment process with our interim assessment blocks. So we can clarify the intended learning, elicit evidence, we can interpret that evidence and then, of course, act on it. Our next webinar in November will focus on some strategies to interpret evidence with students, so we hope you will be able to join us then as well. Today's webinar is to focus on four ways you can use the interim assessments, and we have identified these four ways as a quick check using individual items with students, 
as an instructional activity using them um, with a whole class together. And also a third way is to clarify the criteria using the scoring guides or the hand scoring materials. Um, and then the fourth way, as many of you are probably using them already or maybe using them in a standardized, more formal administration. And so as we go through today, um, we will go over each of these types with a little bit more detail. Hi, everyone. This is Rebecca Bowers from California. Can you hear me okay? We can. Thank you for joining. Great. Thank you. Um, I will discuss use case one. Um, that's up on the screen. It's the individual items as a quick check. And with this use case, teacher, a teacher will administer an interim assessment block as a non-standardized fashion. And it's a quick check for understanding during instruction. As a whole class activity, the teacher projects an individual item on the board for the entire class to see. Uh, the teacher has the flexibility to determine the best way for students to respond in this way. They may respond on paper, in journals, interactive notebooks, on whiteboards, or any other response method of the teacher's choosing. Students may work individually or in groups for this activity. And an added benefit of incorporating interim assessment items into instruction is that it allows students to start becoming familiar with the testing interface and the types of questions that they will see on the Smarter Balanced Assessment. On the next slide, we have consideration. Uh, when implementing the IABs as a quick check, it is best to select items that are aligned with current instruction to better gauge student progress on a given set of skills, serving as a true formative assessment. So you'll see that as consideration number one. Uh, teachers can provide and receive immediate feedback as a whole class activity and adjust their instruction based on the overall understanding of their students as well. Another consideration is the cons that constructed response items can be particularly beneficial to implement with this case since they allow students the opportunity to think through a question as a class, talking through any potential areas of struggle. Students may also receive the rubric as a class to understand how a student would receive full credit for that type of question. Below you'll see a few suggested formative strategies to use with this case. One of them is the red, yellow, green, blue strategy and the stars and stairs strategy, which can provide students an opportunity to self-assess their next step needs and goals. Another suggested strategy for this use case is having students view the question projected on the screen and answer on paper as an entry or exit ticket. The teacher would collect the individual responses and review areas of strengths and weaknesses as a whole class or individually with their students. Keep in mind that each one of the use cases presented today is only a suggestion for IAB implementation and can be modified to best fit the needs of any selected group of students. And with that, I'll turn it over to Joe to share use case two with you. Thanks, Rebecca. Uh, use case two is identified as a classroom activity. And for this one, the focus of this case is on class collaboration. So understanding that collaboration is key uh, that means that this uh, use case, much like use case one, is a non-standardized usage of the IABs. The difference here between one and two is that the purpose of two is not explicitly focused on checking understanding, however you can do that. Um, the main focus here is going to be creating discourse between students. Uh, the discourse is what will be able to provide the educator with addition, an additional window into student thinking. Uh, here, educators may select to use this case with student pairs, partners, uh, or even small groups. In addition, they also have the option of engaging in the IAB on paper or within the interim assessment online system. Uh, so you can use your computers for that, and that will also help students uh, become familiar with the assessment system itself. As I mentioned, the imperative aspect of this use case is collaboration. Uh, options to engage are either collaborating during the initial efforts or allowing individuals to uh, engage separately and then have them join afterwards to discuss their thinking. And moving on to considerations. Uh, the main consideration for this is discourse and the result at the, sorry, is the discourse that results from the collaboration. 
So discourse may happen between students, between groups of students, or even between students and educators. Uh, one manner to investigate discourse, especially with constructive response work, is utilizing the scoring criteria. Uh, the use of that will actually assist students in learning how to evaluate their own efforts relative to expectations. Uh, we provide three suggested formative assessment strategies for this use case. Uh, think, pair, share is a big one that we use in mathematics. Um, so individual time, group time, and then uh, or partner time, then group time. And then we also use gradual release or productive struggle. Uh, the difference there is gradual release would be doing it as a whole group and slowly moving down to partners and then individuals whereas productive struggle would be to allow the students to engage in something without assistance and then as an educator stepping in where assistance may be needed. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to use case three, and that's Shelley from Washington. Thank you, Joe. Uh, so use case three is a nice jumping point from some of um, what Joe was just talking about. Uh, really, use case three is about clarifying the criteria and then applying that to some practice items from the interim. So the purpose is really, first of all, to calibrate that scoring criteria so the students really understand what the expectations are and then can apply that in a self-assessment and peer feedback type of setting. So it's really twofold. This can be done in small groups or whole groups. Teacher might decide to uh, model it with the whole class and then have small groups then practice it or might do a combination thereof, so potentially a whole group discussion of the criteria and breaking it down with understanding of some samples and then turning it over to the students to apply to themselves or to peer work. Um, so lots of different options there. So as the teacher's deciding what size group, the delivery is also got some flexibility, students could do it on the computer, either in the system, or they could also even use an, their own system like a Google Doc. So if this was a more of a constructed response type of item practicing with, getting some pr extra practice and just typing a response would be a possibility. Um, it could be projected and students could be using their own paper to write responses. So again, flexibility. The task itself is really that students are working collaboratively to discuss the criteria-based evaluation. So trying to steer away from calling it just a rubric, um, but many people refer to it a ru as a rubric or the scoring criteria, but something that has some criteria that students are trying to look at, um, either samples, um, generic samples, their own sample, or other peers, and then apply it to that criteria. Some things to consider is you want to make sure that there are some samples that are available, um, the scoring criteria should be available to students, Rubrics is a one way that students can then apply the scoring criteria. We don't want to just give students the samples and the rubrics and say go. So it's just kind of considering how to walk students through that. Um, there are also hand scoring materials available with the interims. They are considered secure, so they're for teachers and students. Um, and then just kind of being aware of if you were practicing with this in the system, for an interim system and a more standardized approach, just be aware of potential student identifiable information um, if students are peer, peer uh, reviewing. Some suggested formative strategies, of course, the peer feedback, we'd like to think of this as a loop. Um, so giving feedback and then acting on it and not just a one-sided type of loop. Um, and then sentence frames are sometimes helpful for students to help with that peer feedback, so to give them some guidance. Um, and then also students can self-reflect afterwards, so after getting some of that feedback from peers or doing their own self-assessment, um, applying it to the scoring criteria, they can then reflect upon that. So all bits and pieces of the different formative process. So that was use case three, and I'm going to pass it on to Antoine at this time. Okay. Thanks, Shelley. Uh, this brings us to our final use case four. This use case is the most formal in using the interim assessment system and, and data reports. The purpose is to administer an interim assessment block as one measure of student learning on a topic or set of skills at a point in time, typically after instruction has occurred, and gather and evaluate data on student performance. This case is designed to generate data at the individual student level through the online interim testing system. 
As part of the formative assessment process, educators can use this data to both summarize individual student learning on the topic and possibly identify specific areas of strength and needs for a particular student. Students can and likely should be involved in the evaluation of their interim assessment block data. In this case, uh, students take an interim assessment in a very similar way as they would take the end of the year summative assessment test. Uh, they do this on a computer, it's done individually without teacher or peer guidance or collaboration. Uh, we recommend that the same student tools, supports, and accommodations be made available during this type of interim administration as students would have uh, during the summative test. This includes those available through the online testing system and non-embedded resources. This will increase student access and the reliability of and validity of inferences made from the interim data results. Some considerations uh, for this use is that interim assessment block uses uh, include a near, uh, could include using them as a near end of unit assessment where instructional adjustments can still be made. There are likely other ways, considering that this case uses is designed to generate a data report at the individual student level on skills and topics assessed in the interim assessment block. Knowing that this is the case use, uh, that this case use will generate this kind of data can help inform how it will fit best with your particular classroom practices. For this use case, there are also strong connections with the formative assessment process. There has been a purposeful connection made between the interim assessment blocks aligned to the standards and expectations described by them to instructional resources in the digital library. Each interim assessment block has a digital library connection playlist and each playlist describes skills assessed or connected to the interim assessment block group into three performance categories, those being below standard, at or near standard, and above standard. There are also descriptions of educator recommended possible next instructional steps with links to the related digital library resources for skills in the three performance categories. The data reports for the interim can be used to guide which steps and resources to use with which students. Additionally, educators can dig into the data generated in the interim testing system to reflect on practices and share data with colleagues in professional learning communities or other similar settings. The data generated can also be shared with the individual student to help them identify areas of strength and need and to set goals and include the data. Uh, as with all data, we want to stress that interim results gathered through this case uh, should be one of multiple measures uh, and data sources to guide teacher practices and student learning. So for some reminders, I'll turn it back over to Shelley. Thank you, Anton. So just a couple of reminders. The interims are intended for teachers and students. They are meant to be used in classrooms. Um, so they're not meant to be sent home or posted online. It's important that if there are um, parents or community members who want to see what Smarter Balance items look like, there are practice and training tests available to the public as well as the sample items website so they can see kind of the interactive look and feel and experience of Smarter Balance items. So it's just that we want to make sure that that's clear and also that this is not an exhaustive list. So these are just some potential cases, some potential ways to be creative with using the interims. But we also know that educators have their own uses in their classrooms. Um, so we just want to make it clear that this is not the only four cases that exist. And if you have any questions about any of the interims, please make sure you see your state assessment team um, and they can help guide you through the process of interims. Wonderful. Thank you, team. And just a quick follow-up. We hope that um, we met our goal today to provide you with tips and ideas to intentionally use the IABs to gather and act on the information about student learning um, and that you will be able to use these to with students and that you will reflect on the process and be able to implement the next steps to move learning forward. So thank you for joining us. If there are more questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat box. Otherwise, please have a fabulous day and use your interim assessments creatively.